Good afternoon. This is Stuart Nakbar with Educated Quest. With me today is Christopher Gage. He is Associate Provost and Dean of Enrollment Services at Belmont University in Nashville, Tennessee. Also with me is Brooke Brannon, Director of University Admissions at Belmont. Guys, thank you for joining me this afternoon. You're welcome. Glad to be here. Pleasure to be here. The, the reason I contacted you and I wanted to talk, talk up Belmont is it's, be, it's attracted more interest. I live in New Jersey um, between Princeton and Trenton. I'm about an hour from Philadelphia, an hour and a half from New York. And I'm seeing that students from New Jersey are committing to Belmont. And it was a school, uh, to be quite honest, until some student told me they were going there that I, I, I knew nothing about. And I did a little homework. Um, I know that the school has an importance in the music industry and instructing people in music, not only performance, but also business and technology and things majors, quite honestly, I don't see at many schools. And I also, but when I went to your site, I also saw things like pharmacy and architecture. I, I saw a very comprehensive university that's about maybe a fifth the number of undergrads that Rutgers has, or about a quarter the number that the University of Tennessee has. So could you, aside from academics, and there's over, I saw there's over a hundred majors. Can you tell me what some of the special sauce is about Belmont? What is it that draws uh, students from from outside the South, from outside Tennessee, from New Jersey, to uh, to take a, take a look at the school and ultimately deposit. I think you hit the nail on the head with the first one. Um, our academic programs. We have some very unique programs. We were the first university in the country to have a publishing degree. For instance, um, our most popular major is music business. It's a business degree studying the music industry in Music City, and so you find programs here. We we are very. Um, we are very particular about what we start. We're very intentional with the programs that we start and being able to offer to our students what the needs of the world has right now. And so one of our newest majors is global leadership. Uh, we, we, we know that there is a need for some global leadership uh, across the country and across the world. And so we have developed a program in that. So our board of trustees and our senior leadership is very intentional when we start new majors in the different departments around campus. So certainly academics is a big part of it. Our Christian community, uh, there's a lot of students looking for the private Christian experience in a medium-sized school. And so um, certainly Belmont would fit that mold. Um, I will say we are a student-centered university. So from the moment someone steps on campus, the feedback we hear is that they are the priority and that everything that we do, every decision that we make, the student is the first thing we think about in that decision. And um, while I do think a lot of universities may be like that, we're very, very upfront about, it's in our mission statement. That's how important it is to us. And we're really trying to find the students who want to change the world. And I know that sounds like a really big statement, but we want to empower them to follow their dreams, follow their passion, um, their, their God-given talents to figure out how they can make a difference, not only to themselves, but in the world and in the life of others. Um, and I, I would be remiss to mention Nashville. Nashville is a very hot city right now. And so I think the city in which we're in leads to incredible internships. About 72% of our students last year held an internship before they graduated. Um, so we are a mecca of internships and research possibilities. So we, we span a broad range of subjects. So students who really want to participate in the community, not just in the school, they find Nashville as an ideal city in which to, to be exposed to and be a part of. Are most students who come, are they familiar with Nashville before they get there? Or is there like a Nashville orientation that you have to build up to help the students become more familiar? It's a good question. We get a mix, to be honest with you. We, we have a lot of people who said, I've driven through it on my way to the beach, or um, I know about it. The parents have been here most likely, but maybe not the student and they, they hadn't been to Belmont's campus. Um, so we do get a broad mix of that. 
um, you know, we'd get some crazy questions like, do I have to listen to country music? Because they don't realize that Music City is not just all about country music. And so um, I, I think it's, it's a pretty good mix of people who are very intentional about wanting to be in Nashville and those that just have not been here before and are excited about it. And do you do anything to help uh, your office or another office do anything sort of like a Nashville welcome kit? We offer them a QR code that um, takes them to all of our favorite local restaurants. So places our students go to. Certainly we partner with the um, Visitors Bureau. We, we partner with them and we have a video that we show them about Nashville when they come to visit and check out Belmont. Um, but for us and what, what we have found that student that families want is they don't really wanna know about the touristy things. They wanna know if I'm a student here, what am I going to do? I'm probably not going to go to Broadway every weekend and listen to live music, but where am I going to go? And so um, we talk about the restaurants that you can walk to because it's a very walkable campus, very walkable city in some areas. And so we make sure to point out if you were a student, this is what you do. You pointed out the popularity of music business. Mm -hmm. Does someone, um, if you have someone who loves music, but is not a musician, mm -hmm. can the program accommodate them? Yeah, that that Absolutely. that I yeah that that defines a lot of our students here. They may not want to do it as a career. They may not want to major in it, but they still want to continue their practice. And they will find a lot of ways to be involved, from private lessons to ensembles to just being in Nashville. They can go and do an open mic night anywhere in the city. Um, mm -hmm. And, and they're getting, they're picking up again now that, that COVID restrictions are, are loosening up a little bit. So they will have the opportunity to do that in the city. How, how was the city and how was the campus impacted by the pandemic? Good question. Um, quite frankly, or Chris, let, I'm going to just keep talking unless you jump in. and <laughs> Keep going, Brooke. So. <laughs> um, keep going. Belmont, we opened back up last June. So we were one of the first campuses to open and welcome visitors back to campus, but we had very strict rules and regulations. And that, because of that, and because of our students and our faculty and staff taking it so seriously, we never had to cut classes early and go fully remote. We never had to confine students to their right. residence halls shelter and try to control, place. yeah, shelter in place. We never had to do any of that because we, we, were, we were more conservative than the city and we were more conservative than we probably needed to be, but it's because we wanted to make sure we could still offer the opportunity of in-person classes to our students. That was important to them. So we did a hybrid model where they may, if they have a Tuesday, Thursday class, they may come to class on Tuesday, but then do it online Thursday. Um, they could do fully remote if they did not feel comfortable being here. That was fine as well. Um, masks were required on or inside and outside, even though the city of Nashville doesn't necessarily require you to wear masks outside, we do uh, because we just, we just want to make sure the safety of our students, faculty, staff, and guests uh, are the top priority. Did um, the university have to do anything in the dining hall or the student uh, center mm -hmm. where the residence halls that they need to be de-densified in any way? Yes, yes, there's capacity limitations everywhere. Um, as far as residence halls, we got rid of visiting hours. So you could not visit another residence hall. Only if you lived there could you could you go into that building, um, which unfortunately we weren't able to give campus tours through residence halls, um, which was understood by prospective families, but it was still a little, a little frustrating because they wanted to see them. Um, we hope to be able to change that moving forward. As far as the... Um, the dining, the cafeteria, that was completely overhauled. Um, you will notice that most of the tables on, in the dining hall have plastic dividers. So if there's a round table that seats four people, there's an X right through the center. So you have your little area that you eat in. Um, all of our buffets, we have a salad bar. Well, that is not self-service anymore. So everything has changed as far as that goes. And at some point, um, as more students are vaccinated, as there's, um, you know, more comfort um, mm -hmm. with easing restrictions, do those things go away or are they going to stick around for like the semester? It's a good question. We don't know. That is, that is yet to be decided. So mm -hmm. I, I think you would be joined by people at hundreds of schools. I know. <laughs> with, with that. I, I, there's a lot of, yeah. there's a lot of I don't knows out mm -hmm. there. Um, with respect to a pandemic 
Um, and we join those incoming students asking those questions because <laughs> we yeah. just don't know. And I know they really want to know as they make this big decision, but we are right alongside them with we, we truly don't know because the pandemic changes everything in a second. So all we can count on is this week and right now and what we're doing. What is the weather like um, in, let's say, from November 1st through uh, the time people would leave for, uh, for between the fall and the spring? What is the, the weather? weather? Yeah. Chris, you want to take this since you're a recent native but, to Nashville? So I, I'm a recent um, addition to the Nashville area. I, I moved here from southeastern Indiana and actually originally from Northeast Philadelphia, Stuart. So I need to find out where in Jersey you are because I live right across the Delaware in, in Yardley, PA from Bucks County. But uh, I love the weather here. I love the weather here. The, the, I would define the winters as mild, certainly compared to the Northeast and Jersey and Philly, very mild winters. We had snow once or twice. And, and by snow, I mean a dusting on the ground and more ice than anything else. I think ice is more of a concern in Nashville. The topography is different than what I think most people would expect. So there are a lot of hills in the Nashville area and the surrounding counties, but the, the winter is very mild. The fall and the spring are beautiful. Uh, it is a little overcast. You probably can't tell behind my window here, but it's a little overcast and a little rainy today, but most days are, are sunny in the spring. You had said 70s earlier at the top of the call, Stuart, we're probably in the high 60s, low 70s, mid 70s in, in the spring, in the fall, clear skies, beautiful weather. Yeah. So I, I did a, the reason I asked, I did a fall visit to a school in New York State, and it was in late September, and they put classes in tents for, you know, for a few weeks because it was warm enough to have people outside. Okay. And I was curious. Or, if you yeah, have outdoor classes them. are common in the spring. You'll find them out on the quad post pandemic times. But I um, mean, I'll give you a different perspective. I'm from Texas. So I would say the winters are a bit chilly. <laughs> <laughs> the, the one thing, the reason I also took this is Belmont has this like grand lawn. Yes. Oh, it's beautiful. We have and, two actually. Yeah. And it, it seems to be managed, uh, you know, very well manicured definitely it's beautiful meticulously walk. but i've also seen rules about when people had to stay off the grass and i wondered if classes were held on the lawn there's another area of campus where classes are held there's the quad um and so you'll see more classes over by the gazebos and kind of the we called it the older side of campus um though you probably wouldn't know it was old by looking at it is there a tradition like if you walk by something or step on something something happens no, I, I know what you're talking about. I've been on campus. I attended a campus where that there is that tradition, but um, no, we do not have anything like that. <laughs> Who would be uh, the person most likely to succeed at Belmont versus going to another school that might have the same major? It's a great question. I will say the students here, if I could describe a successful student, is they like to be academically challenged. They're not afraid of the classroom. They want to be pushed. They want to be challenged. They are incredibly passionate. Um, whether that is in music, whether it's in marketing, whether it's in chemistry, they are very passionate about what they do. Um, this city screams creativity. Um, in every aspect. And so when you walk on this campus, there is a creative vibe that just sort of overtakes you and is supported. Um, we do have a lot of music, theater, art, creative art type programs, but nursing is our second largest major. And so we have a really great balance of students here that um, they're not after each other. It's not a competitive type environment where you might find in some of the fine arts. Um, it is more of a supportive environment of you do you and we are gonna be there to support you. Um, I would say the students here genuinely care about each other. I think that goes to the Christian community of it all. Um, mm -hmm. And they are respective. You don't have to be Christian to attend and voices are respected and appreciated here. Uh, we like to be challenged. The students like to be challenged, not only academically, but also within their faith. They want to be able to talk about and learn about things that are different from, from how they grew up. 
Uh, most of our students are from out of state. And so that rich conversation happens in the classroom on a daily basis. And I think that only adds to the type of education they're getting when they can hear those different viewpoints from all over. Do you get more of the students out from out of state from the neighboring states or is it pretty well spread across the country? It's well spread. Our largest states represented are going to be Tennessee, Texas, and, and Illinois, specifically the Chicago area. California is creeping up there. Um, Florida has, has gotten to be a really big state for us as well. Atlanta, of course, um, because that's such an easy drive. But yeah, we see them from, we have students from all 50 states. Yeah, all 50 states represented, 28 countries. The, the mix that we see from our students, so, you know, everybody from the Northeast, the upper Midwest, Midwest, West Coast, all of those different personalities, the diversity of interests, I think it plays into what Brooke was kind of talking about, this, this sense of creativity and, and artistic ability. It's a great mix of left brain and right brain type students here. It, it really is pretty remarkable to see the, um, the creative, musically oriented student sitting right alongside at lunch with the chemistry student. I mean, it really is pretty remarkable that it, it is a comprehensive university, but certainly known for this niche within uh, music. But like Brooke said, nursing is our second largest major. And we have programs like you mentioned, Stuart, architecture, um, music and performing arts, the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences. So just everything that's that could be available at a comprehensive university you find in our portfolio. How do you, you take that creative vibe that Brooke mentioned and channel it to bring the students together, whether they're freshmen moving in or whether they need, you know, kind of a chance to relax, let's say before finals or before midterms or, or before they're ready to graduate leave, you know, for the school the summer or graduate how do you channel all that together do you bring students together for do you have big events that students attend outside mm -hmm. of uh, outside of something that's kind of schedule like a basketball mm -hmm. game yeah we do we have a very robust student activities with over 160 different clubs and organizations our student activity programming board is is one of the most robust i've seen um they have something planned on campus every single Friday night for the entire student body. Um, Nashville's an easy city to go and explore. And we encourage that. We want them to take advantage of us being in Nashville, but also we wanna be able to provide programming on campus for students mm -hmm. who may not want to do that, or they've done that. And they just wanna stay and develop the community here on campus. So our programming board does something literally every Friday night. There's movie nights, there's um, dances. They've done a couple of fun dances. Our fraternities and sororities do plan events that are campus-wide fundraising events as well. Um, one of our largest events on campus that we host is a music concert, go figure. Um, and we offer five of those every year. And that's, that's one of our traditions and they are completely student run and led. Student bands compete to, to play. Um, there's a different genre for each one. And at the very end, the last one is Battle of Bands and it's all the winners from all the genres. And so um, that those are, they're, they're in our big Curb Event Center and they are remarkable. And, and the fact that our audio engineering Talent. technology students are doing all the audio, yeah. lighting yeah. students are doing the lighting, our students are performing. I mean, it's just, it, that that's one of our biggest, um, most popular events on campus. You know, it's interesting you said that because there's only one other school I've been to where I think they really try to do that around the arts. And that was Carnegie Mellon. Mm, okay. Because mm -hmm. you had um, people who were, you know, musicians and actors. Yeah. And then you had people who were engineers All and scientists mm -hmm. and yeah. business majors and architects. But it's they they want the school tried to break down walls. Yeah. Between these people, so they wanted they wanted the students to go to a concert. Yeah. their friends perform mm -hmm. and the and the uh they also didn't want the uh performing artists to ignore the fact that there were all these bright people on campus mm -hmm. who you know if, if if you could get them to come out might listen to them mm -hmm. and it, it's nice to see that yeah. on on a on a college campus i would imagine it's not all country music Oh no, the, the mm -hmm. genres are, are, there's urban pop, there's rock, there's country, there's Christian. Um, yeah. And then the fifth one is Battle of the Bands with all of them. Is there a dominant uh, musical preference among the students? 
Oh gosh, it is all over the place. I mm. would say the least dominant is country, to be honest. Um, that's what yeah. I hear the students. I work with the tour guides and the students that work in the admissions office. There's about 130 of them. And I, I could probably name just a handful that say country would be their main genre. When you think about the songwriting program that we have, so the, the songwriting industry is, is clearly something that Nashville is um, very well known for, but within our songwriting um, degree program, country is only about 25% of the, the expressed interest for our students when they come to, to Belmont to uh, think about songwriting, if you will, um, where, where you might see also other things like R&B, pop, rock, contemporary, Christian. So it's interesting. It's not, uh, it's not, I don't think you're going to see all the cowboy hats and boots that you might expect if you were to come <laughs> on the campus. But someone who's like a violinist would oh, be able yeah. to play across genres. They might be able to be at a classical concert. Absolutely. They might be able to back up a country singer. They might be able to back up a, a rap singer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think that bleeds into everything, that interdisciplinary concept. It certainly bleeds into our curriculum, too, and the majors that we offer. We, we really, uh, we like to mesh things together and not just do one standard way. So we like to think outside the box here. Now, what I, one thing I read about Belmont is students have to participate in a series of programs. They go over 60 hours mm -hmm. and they go outside the curriculum. They're not courses. Mm -hmm. um, they're called like a well core, mm -hmm. I believe the name is. Can yeah. You, can you tell me a little bit sure. about that? It's super unique and can be confusing at first to, to wrap your mind around. But um, one of the main goals Belmont has for its students is to help shape them into well-rounded adults, um, academically, spiritually, and socially. And this is the one, with it, one of the ways in which they do so. So there are six different categories and each student has to attend or participate in 10 hours for each of the categories. And the categories range. Um, I'll, I'll do the one that gets filled the quickest is our community service category. And so they just have to do a service project. Within four years of attending Belmont, they need to go serve somewhere, something. Um, we actually, all, all the freshmen serve together during freshman orientation. So that knocks out two to three hours of those 10 immediately by just coming to orientation. Um, but students tend to fill those up pretty quickly. Um, there is one about um, Christian faith development. And you could, we do have chapel three times a week, um, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So if a student were to attend chapel, that would count as one hour towards that 10. But we also do other things. We had um, typically every year, Amy Grant will come and speak to the students about Christianity within the music mm -hmm. business industry and what that plays out like. And if you just go and listen to her talk, that would count as an hour of your well core credit under Christian faith development. So um, there's some really unique things. We, we bring a ton of speakers to campus and I know other campuses do that as well, but we really give them the motivation, the encouragement, the requirement to take part in it. Um, so for example, I was a business major in college, but there you have to do 10 hours in the arts. Uh, that's something I didn't do in college. I did not go to any art shows or music performances. And for our students, that is a requirement. You, that's a big piece of you that you need to learn about. Um, and so that it really encourages our students to develop that, that um, well-rounded nature. So. And I think, it, I think it gives them opportunities to develop this sense of lifelong inquiry. If we're, if we're putting in front of the students, we want you to do these uh, or participate in these creative exercises or cultural experiences that if they were just to focus on their particular program of study, let's say it's in the Massey College of Business to Brooks Point, you're not, you might have blinders on it. We really want to uh, remove those blinders and allow students to see everything that Belmont and the world, quite frankly, has to offer. So the best way to do that is to, to just have these requirements for them. And those 60 hours, that's over all four years? Mm -hmm. Overall. And let me make another comment that um, in a traditional year, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we have well core hour. So from 10 to 11 a.m., there's no classes. There's not a class at 10 a.m. on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's when we bring in the speakers. That's when chapel is happening. That's when student orgs can meet if they need to meet. But we believe so much in this that we want to make sure that we make it easy for our students to be able to attend. And so while, yes, a lot will happen in the evening as well, but there's also the opportunity for them to, to see these speakers and, and go to these events during, during the weekday. Are students responsible for logging that they attended something? 
it's on their ID card. It gets scanned when they leave. And so it just all goes into their Belmont account. Oh, okay. So, mm -hmm. so if the, so they would get back something at mm -hmm. some point saying they fulfilled mm -hmm. the requirement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they just log online to their account and it tells them how many hours of each category is still required or completed. And, and if someone enters and they're not Christian, mm -hmm. are there alternatives? Like if they come in and they're of another faith or they're, they, 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 they are not a member of an organized religion. Mm -hmm. um, are there, are there accommodations for that? It's the same requirement, to be quite honest with you, but there are so many different opportunities to fill that Christian faith development, those 10 hours, that they will find something that um, suits them. So it's not it, it's not all about going to chapel. You could fulfill those without having set foot in our chapel, to be honest with you. Um, you know, we have like Larry the Cucumber came and spoke to us and it fulfilled that, that development. So it, these speakers that they go and see um, certainly range from different backgrounds and, and different conversations. So it could be a spiritual, motivational mm -hmm. kind of speaker who might yes. not be taking a religious theme. It's technically called spiritual well-being as the, as the requirement, yeah. Now, um, the, now, over the course of you know, the, going through the pandemic, was, has there been a growing sense of optimism for the fall? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There has been. Um, we're trying to get to life as normal. We have cut the amount of online classes that we're going to offer because we really want our students here. We want them in the class. Um, we hope to have student activities and organizations meeting again in person instead of over Zoom. So we're, we're feeling really confident in science and in uh, the world in which we live right now. Last question. Um, both of your basketball teams had very successful seasons. Um, the women had the chance to go on to the NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm but the men did not. What was the feeling on campus about that? Oh, we were bummed for sure. <laughs> we, we were excited, <laughs> but certainly um, we, were, we were very, very proud of them. But, um, you know, I think the same feeling that any other college and students, faculty and staff would have is um, we were so excited for the women though. That was great. That was history great. being made right there. We've never made it that far, so. Well, I, I, believe, I, I believe you guys were robbed. You know, I, I felt that you, you, you won the conference, you had a very successful season, deserved to compete. And when the team is successful, do the students come behind it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. With anything, athletics, music, science, all of it. It's, it's, an, it's really, I know I'm biased. I, I recognize that, but it is really an incredible community of students. Brooke, uh, Chris, thank you very much for, for spending the time with me this afternoon. And mm -hmm. I appreciate the opportunity to learn more about Belmont. Mm -hmm. sure. thank, thank you for you listening. Yeah, I appreciate it.